There's something powerful going on in modern marketing today you may not be fully aware of. Let's dive into neuromarketing and how neuroscience and psychological strategy help companies gain an edge on what drives consumer decision making. We'll briefly discuss neuromarketing and then go into a few examples. According to an article in the Harvard Business Review, neuromarketing can be summarized as consumer neuroscience in the study of the brain and how neural signals work to gain insight into customers' motivations, preferences, and decisions. So how does all this work? The brain is complex and characterized by a more analytical left side and a more visually focused right side. This is why digital messaging is so focused on visual and audible elements. There are three main components to be aware of, as seen in this image from the John Hopkins School of Medicine. The cerebrum, or thinking brain, processes thought. It's the part we use to make things happen. Then our cerebellum, or feeling brain, is where our emotions or emotional triggers take place. Then we have the brain stem, or the primal brain. Here is where our survival instincts run on autopilot. So how about a few examples? We'll start with the feeling brain. During the pandemic, Google created a joyous message that hit home for many people. They use storytelling to inspire, uh, emotionally connect, and educate their audience. Let's take a look. By balancing the thinking and feeling parts of our brain, Google subliminally connected their most common services and features to tell an emotional story, reassuring us that the pandemic would soon end. Okay, wind the clocks back to 2001. It's difficult to pass up the movie Artificial Intelligence by Steven Spielberg, which invoked our thinking brain. Leading up to the movie's release was a goose chase due to a hidden message in the trailer's credits that led to the first time alternate reality gaming was used to promote a movie. So what happened? When a film critic finally figured out the false credit, it led to a vast uncovering of a puzzle game of clues hidden in websites, chat rooms, and message boards, all before modern social media was available. Each clue was built on fantastic storytelling techniques told on different forms of media, releasing another part of the character plot within a movie yet to open at the box office. This built up audience engagement because everyone felt they could solve the clues. It was a monumentally effective campaign, reaching a broad audience, which is the intended goal of thinking brain-based strategies. All these resources were used to connect with our thinking brain to evaluate and see clues that led from one source to another. Finally, this recent public service announcement by the Sandy Hook School spoke to the primal part of our brain. Here it is. This year, my mom got me the perfect bag for back to school. These colorful binders help me stay organized. These headphones are just what I need for studying. These new sneakers are just what I need for the new year. This jacket is a real must-have. My parents got me the skateboard I wanted. It's pretty cool. These scissors really come in handy in art class. These colored pencils, too. These new socks, they can be a real lifesaver. <laughs> I finally got my own phone to stay in touch with my mom.
Recreating these actual events, do you think it invoked a sense of fear, anger, sadness? When thinking with our primal brains, we either act, donate, or run. These examples showcase techniques and strategies that connect with each part of our brain. When used together, they create a powerful neuromarketing tool. The more a message connects with each of these areas of our brain, the more powerfully we react to the message. They all use several visual and audible stimuli to enhance the portions of our brain that are most likely to place us in response mode and respond to the call to action. Thanks.